implications of the hypothesis put forth in this video, in case it hasn't dawned on you yet watching this series, are quite shocking. Typhus is a poison, not a disease. Its secrets are known and employed and concealed by the synagogue of Satan, i.e. the learned elders of Zion, i.e. the Jewish doctor mafia that is apparently carrying out the secret coven. But typhus is what the Jews and others died of in the Nazi concentration camps. Now here are the delousing chambers. Typhus was a terrible problem in the camp, and the lice that carried it had to be destroyed. Right, now we get to it. I won't go into the Holocaust denial spiel, but if you're valiant for the truth upon the earth, you've researched what the Holocaust deniers have to say already. I thought we weren't going to try the Holocaust. We're not. I thought we weren't going to debate, did the Holocaust happen? You time. want gullible students to believe that there are mounds of documents which prove a Holocaust. The SS gave them so. They told them to breathe all the time because it's good for disinfecting. And then they gassed them. But Mila, why soaps? So that they would agree to go in, I think. Come on, Mila, stop it. Your bedtime stories are scaring everyone. Yeah. You know, it's ridiculous. I, don't believe it either. I cannot believe it. You sit down on a court and some pompous English judge rules on whether the Holocaust happened. And let's think about this. What if we lose? Huh? Suddenly it becomes acceptable, it becomes respectable to say the Holocaust didn't happen? I didn't say I believed it, I said I heard it. From who? From somebody who heard it from someone who was there. You know, if they were there, they would have been gassed. Yes. It doesn't make any sense. Wait, wait, wait a minute. What do you, you mean that the survivors won't appear? No, 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 no. We, we, we don't want them to. You don't want their testimony? No, under no circumstances. Why not? Why the hell not? Because even to let survivors appear would be to legitimize his right to question them. We're their workforce. What sense does it make to kill your own workforce? To go to all this trouble of assembling a workforce only to... No, it can't be true. We are very, very important for them. Even in the camps at the time, there were Holocaust Good deniers, night. apparently. Good night. Is YouTube Good going night. to delete Schindler's List? It beggars belief. Why has there not been a proper scientific study of this whole site by reputable scientists? 50 years since the fact. I mean, it's ridiculous. Where's the proof? No, this video is for those who have already gone through all that and now know the truth. But there's more to the truth, it turns out. What are you saying, Brother Roberts? That the Jews killed the Jews? That the Holocaust survivors, the ones who somehow knew enough to survive the poisonings and have been collecting those reparation checks for decades, are the ones who committed the Holocaust? The Typhus Holocaust? Yes. Yes. Protocol number 15. Eight. We have not counted the victims of the seed of the Goy cattle. But we have sacrificed many of our own. But for that, we have now already given them such a position on the earth as they could not have even dreamed of comparatively small numbers of the victims from the number of ours have preserved our nationality from destruction. Now Caiaphas was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. Protocol number two, five. But it has paid us, though we have sacrificed many of our people. Each victim on our side is worth, in the sight of God, a thousand goyim. Will ye pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread, to slay the souls that should not die, and to save the souls alive that should not live, by your lying to my people that hear your lies? But of course, Typhus has been around a lot longer than World War II, and has struck during many a war, and disappeared as many a peace treaty was drafted. Let's take a trip back in time, shall we? Son of man, 
speak unto the house of Israel, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Yet in this your fathers have blasphemed me, and that they have committed a trespass against me. Protocol number 1, 24. Our state, marching along the path of peaceful conquest, has the right to replace the horrors of war by less noticeable and more satisfactory sentences of death, necessary to maintain the terror which tends to produce blind submission. The poisons will be hidden in everything that surrounds them, and what they drink, eat, breathe, and wear. We must be ingenious in dispensing the poisons, for they can see far. When their ability to learn has been affected, we will create medicine that will make them sicker and create other diseases, for which we will create yet more medicine. We will make them kill each other when it suits us. We will foment animosity among them through our factions. Protocol number seven, universal war. Three, we must be in a position to respond to every act of opposition by war with the neighbors of that country which dares to oppose us. But if these neighbors should also venture to stand collectively together against us, then we must offer resistance by a universal war. The hate will blind them totally, and never will they see that from their conflict we emerge as the rulers. They will be busy killing each other. For all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. They will bathe in their blood and kill their neighbors for as long as we see fit. We will continue to prosper from their wars and from their deaths. We shall repeat this over and over until our ultimate goal is accomplished. Rykorn's Protocol number 7. We shall force the Christians into wars by exploiting their pride and their stupidity. They will massacre each other and clear the ground for us to put our people into. This is the secret covenant by which we shall live the rest of our present and future lives. For this reality shall transcend many generations and lifespans. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, you scornful men that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. I was daily with you in the temple teaching, and you took me not, but the scriptures must be fulfilled. That upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon you, from the blood of righteous Abel, and the blood of Zacharias, son of Herodias, and you slew between the temple and the altar. The map of the course of the symbolic snake is shown in the the first stage in Europe was in 429 BC in Greece, where, about the time of Pericles, the snake first started eating into the power of that country. The second stage was in Rome, in the time of Augustus, about 69 BC. Why Augustus? You'll remember from an earlier video I made that uh, Augustus didn't exist in 69 BC. So why 69 BC and Augustus? Well, take a look at how Augustus died. Okay, this is the life of Augustus by Suetonius. Let's uh, skip to the end here. See how he dies. When he had begun the journey, he went on as far as Astura, and from there, contrary to his custom, took ship by night, since it chanced that there was a favorable breeze, and thus contracted an illness beginning with diarrhea. Call your doctor at once if you have severe diarrhea. Check one, there's one symptom. Presently, he crossed over to Naples, although his bowels were still weak from intermittent attacks. 
If they continued longer, the distemper fell into the belly, causing violent ulcerations in the bowels. Violent ulceration in the bowels. Let's see what's happening in the bowels here. Abdomen and loins. Pains in abdomen cause violent screaming. He gave but one single sign of wandering before he breathed his last, calling out in a sudden terror that forty men were carrying him off. Call your doctor at once if you have hallucinations. Room seemed to be full of strange men passing in and out who would snatch at her as they passed, which frightened her very much. And even this was rather a premonition than a delusion, since it was that very number of soldiers of the Praetorian Guard that carried him forth to lie in state. I don't know, it sounds like a delusion. Sounds like he's delirious, doesn't he? Musa, prepare the treatment. Poison. It is possible that the Roman Emperor Augustus Caesar had either a liver abscess or typhoid fever and survived by using ice baths and cold compresses as a means of treatment for this fever. Be quiet, both of you. Typhoid fever. What does typhus mean? It comes from the Greek typhus, stupor caused by fever. Does Belladonna cause stupor? Let's look it up. One match here. Uh, somnolence, stupor, lethargy, deep sleep with snoring. Soporous after the spasms, that means sleepy. Comatose. Kind of fancy slum for that guy. You came plenty near making monkeys out of the whole caboodle of it. It's a good thing you nailed him. A couple of more days and it'll blow in a river and all that. Oh, 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 oh. Well, what are you trying to pull this time? And of course, if I look up fever, what am I going to get? Look at all the fevers. Bam, fever, fever, fever. Fever, 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 fever. I'm burning up. I've got a fever. Oh. All right, we'll see if you have. Get the water. Oh. The term typhus was employed by Hippocrates to define a confused state of the intellect with a tendency to stupor. And in this sense, it is aptly applied to typhus fever with slow cerebration and drowsy stupor. Typhoid fever in the 1800s, literally resembling typhus. That's what typhoid means. It means resembling typhus. So called because it originally was thought to be a variety of typhus. No, they were considered to be the same thing. It was thought to be a variety of typhus. It was thought to be typhus itself. Because there's no difference. Typhus versus typhoid fever. What's the difference? We got a fake picture here. Microscopic view of typhoid fever bacteria. Obviously CGI. Although the names of these infections are almost identical, and their symptoms are very similar, they are completely different diseases, they insist. How does typhus differ from typhoid fever? Both diseases are infectious, but they're caused by different types of bacteria that are spread in different ways. Yeah, see, the vector is different, they say. The kind of typhus we tend to see in the U.S. is spread by fleas that catch the disease from rats and opossums. Because there's so many opossums lying around in America. <laughs> Rubbing against opossums and rats all day in America. Typhoid fever is spread through food that's coming into contact with fecal bacteria. Because, you know, we're always drinking feces. Japanese biomedical experimentation during the World War II era. By Sheldon Harris. Here's one excerpt dealing with typhus. Contaminating wells with pathogens was another BW warfare method. BW stands for biological warfare. Unit members dropped hundreds of kilos of typhoid, typhus, paratyphoid A and B. Wait, did they just say they dropped typhus into wells and it was transmitted that way? I thought only typhoid fever was transmitted through drinking water. Typhus has the lice vector. 
Can people catch typhus from drinking water? Evidently they can, according to this article. Although the medical journals say only typhoid fever does that. Hmm, they've not yet mastered the art of lying. Cholera and other pathogens into thousands of wells throughout China and Manchuria. In 1942, villagers in Jiaqian drank water from contaminated wells and a typhoid epidemic erupted within a short time. Survivors later counted 400 deaths from an original population of roughly 600. And there's at least one report that biological warfare troops in July 1942 distributed bottles of germs along the Zhejiang Jiangxi Railway line causing outbreaks of typhoid fever that led to the deaths of more than 10,000 people. Honestly, though, how dumb an idea is this to use disease as a weapon? Whether it's a virus or a bacteria, I don't see how it can be a good weapon at all, since it's just as likely to kill your own army as the other army. Especially since it's your army that's going to be cultivating it and handling it. It seriously makes no sense. A poison, on the other hand, makes all the sense in the world. You can poison the other guy without getting it on yourself. That's no problem. What are the symptoms? The, the, sim the clinical symptoms can be very similar. Fever, muscle aches, headache, and possibly a rash on the trunk or back. Muscle aches. Let's see what's happening with Belladonna with regards to muscles. Cutting tear oh, here we go. Cutting tearing in lower muscles of both forearms. <clears throat> Cramp pain in gluteal muscles. Cutting stitches in outer muscles of right thigh. There you go. Okay, headaches, right? Let's look for headaches. I feel like my head's gonna bust wide open. Inner head. Frontal headache. Headache and possibly a rash on the trunk or back. Rash, eh? Let's look up rash. Expression of rash. Universal redness of skin with or without rash. Rash of scarlet fever because I think this is scarlet fever. Scarlet rash over whole body. Purple rash. How can someone tell the difference between the two diseases? Symptoms like diarrhea or constipation are more commonly seen with typhoid fever than with typhus. More commonly seen. In other words, it's seen in both. So that is not a difference. They just told you a similarity. Another similarity is diarrhea or constipation, which is the same thing with deadly nightshade. Call your doctor at once if you have severe diarrhea or severe constipation. A physician can make a diagnosis using different types of blood tests. Different types of blood tests. Yes, yeah, so he'll do, he'll do one test and it'll be typhoid fever. He'll do another test and it'll be typhus. So you can, he can choose what it is based on the fake test he chooses. See, look at this guy's grin. Do you trust that guy? Why are the names so similar? People thought they were the same disease until the 1800s when a physician determined that they were different infections. They are the same thing. What's the difference between typhus and typhoid? If you find yourself sick with flu-like symptoms, fever and chills, okay, fever symptoms of belladonna, she's occasionally chilly, I got the chills. It's that stuff, Bert. It's that goddamn stuff we breathe. What stuff? What, what are you talking about, Frank? Chill and heat alternating. Oh, that's interesting. Several attacks of fever in one day, during which hot stage followed with cold within a few minutes to a half hour after, All, always without thirst in either stage, and mostly with confusion of head. Abdominal pain. Oh. Here you are, Doc. Oh, Gaffney, what seems to be a trouble? My belly's on fire. You don't think it's typhoid? Maybe it is, Doc. Seems to be getting plenty fashionable around here. A rash and severe confusion. You might have typhus. Or is it typhoid? No wonder you're feeling confused. Until the mid-1800s, doctors didn't even realize they were two different diseases because the symptoms and the conditions that spawned outbreaks looked so similar. You probably don't have either one if you live in the U.S.
but for the sake of argument, here's a handy guide. Why would you not have it in the U.S.? It's very continent-specific where you get it there, but you don't get it here. It's like people are only drinking feces in Africa, not in America. The fleas never travel from continent to continent. The, this continent-specific disease situation doesn't make sense to me. It's not believable, not credible. Okay, typhus symptoms. Let's take a look at typhus symptoms. The first symptoms of typhus usually show up within a week or two, although it might be easy to mistake them for the flu. Coughing with a violent cough. Cough. Does belladonna cause cough? Dry cough. Headaches. First, I got a really fucked headache. Fever and chills. Aching joints and muscles. Aching joints and muscles. Let's take a look at what's happening with the joints. Violent shooting in right maxillary joint. Sharp shooting externally in left elbow and joint. Cutting pain in left elbow joint. Fluid in wrist joint. Paralytic tearing in right middle joint. Painful drawing in posterior joint. Hip joint disease, sharp pains, screams out in sleep. Pain in left elbow joint, tension in joint, pains in joint, sting in knee joint, you get the idea. Abdominal pain and nausea. And I want to puke. A rash starts on the torso and gradually spreads to the limbs. Here, can I say something about this right here? Typhus, which you get by getting bit by lice or fleas, they claim, gives you a rash that starts in the trunk and radiates outward. Why would it start in the trunk? You know, the torso. Wouldn't it logically start at the place where you were bit by lice or fleas? Why always the trunk? Because ground zero for the pathogen is in the trunk, the belly, because something you ate. And if the bacteria was transmitted by lice, why would the bacteria travel all the way down from the skin to the belly and then radiate outward? Doesn't that seem uh, kind of out of the way? Doesn't that seem odd to you? It should radiate from the bite, really, if you think about it. Eventually, the infection spreads to the membrane surrounding the brain, called the meninges. The name typhus comes from a Greek word meaning hazy because the patients with inflamed meninges are severely confused or disoriented. Inflamed meninges, you say. Well, inflamed meninges, that's what meningitis means. Itis means inflamed. Meninges means meninges. Let's see if uh, Belladonna does anything to the meninges. Okay, we got two matches. One is meningitis, which is inflamed meninges, and encephalitis. Cephalus is your head, your inflamed head. And what's the other one? Rolling of head. Threatens extension to meninges. What is your meninges? Question. What is meningitis, though? Let's take a look at meningitis. <clears throat> meningitis. Mayo Clinic. Meningitis is an inflammation of the fluid and membranes, meninges, surrounding your brain and spinal cord. Meningitis typically triggers signs and symptoms such as headache, fever, and a stiff neck. Stiff neck and belladonna. Let's see. We got two matches. Oppression of chest, stiff neck. Here's the other one. Weeping, stiff neck. That's all deadly nightshade poisoning. If I look at all these symptoms... Symptoms may develop over several hours or over several days. Sudden high fever, stiff neck, severe headache that seems different from normal. These are all deadly nightshade symptoms. Headache with nausea or vomiting, confusion or difficulty concentrating, seizures, sleepiness or difficulty waking, sensitivity to the light, definitely deadly nightshade poisoning. No appetite or thirst. Well, that's some people were not thirsty, right? With deadly nightshade poisoning. Skin rash, also deadly nightshade. And here we got the newborns, same thing. Yeah, so we got another one. 
meningitis is actually deadly nightshade poisoning. Causes. <clears throat> Viral infections are the most common cause of meningitis, followed by bacterial infections and really fungal and parasitic infections. So all these things, all these different things cause the same exact list of symptoms. Are you believing this? There's bacteria causes meningitis, and then there's virus, like HIV, mumps, West Nile virus. They all cause viral meningitis. Again, exact same symptoms, but it's a totally different organism. I don't know if you call it, is, a is a virus an organism? Ah, maybe not. But the vi now virus causes the same symptoms. And then you got chronic meningitis caused by fungi, okay? And there's a fungus that causes meningitis, exact same symptoms. And some kind of parasite, like a tapeworm. So it's all these different, totally different, unrelated organisms and whatnot causing meningitis, but it's all the exact same symptoms. Are you, are you starting to doubt this? Yeah, see, look at these complications. Hearing loss. Was that one we didn't? I don't know if we saw that. We should check that one. Hearing and ears. Deafness, as if a skin were drawn over the ears. Yes, we have it. Hardness of hearing, owing to having taken cold. They lose their hearing. Theta typhus. And what does the theta mean? The theta means like a la typhus, like in typhus. So that typhus shares the symptom. Why? Because it is typhus. Okay, because typhus doesn't exist. Memory difficulty, yes. Learning disabilities, yes. Okay, learning disabilities. Her mind was disordered so that speech did not correspond to thought, nor thought to sense, nor sense to objects present. Well, that would disable your learning, wouldn't it? Brain damage, gait problems, ataxic gait, starts walking like a zombie. Seizures, kidney failure, shock, and death. Yes. Stinging, burning pain from region of kidneys down into bladder. Stinging in kidneys. These are all deadly nightshade symptoms. Wash your hands. They give you a mild form of the poison as a vaccination. Just to add to the haziness, typhoid fever got its name because it resembles typhus. If you ate in Typhoid Mary's kitchen, you'd get sick within one to three weeks, and the symptoms would look a lot like typhus. Headache, fever and chills, fatigue or weakness, and abdominal pain, nausea and vomiting. But typhoid hits the digestive system especially hard, and patients end up suffering from constipation and bloody stool. Yeah, but they both have that. Bloody stool, let's do this. Violent tenismus with passage of blood and slime. Slimy and bloody diarrheic stools. Oh, I pronounced it correctly there. Diarrheic. Like typhus, typhoid comes with a spotty skin rash. And patients can be confused or even delirious. Although in this case, that's thanks to fever and dehydration. That's in both cases. See, they're trying to make it look different, but it's not different. Here you can see it even more clearly here. What's the difference between typhoid and typhus? Here, witness the obfuscation here. What makes typhoid and typhus different? Despite having fairly similar names, typhoid and typhus have little in common. One major similarity, and why many have thought them to be the same disease for so long, is the symptoms. Notice how it says the, sy the symptoms are so similar, right? We'll take a look here. Typhus, abdominal pain. Typhoid, abdominal tenderness. Isn't that the same thing as pain? Abdominal pain, abdominal tenderness. What's the difference? See, they're trying to make it look different. But it ain't different. Rash. They don't include the rash here. But the other article said there's a rash in both, right? High fever. Does it say high fever? Yeah, but the other one said there was fever in both. Cough, no cough here. Headache, no headache here. Joint and muscle pain, no joint and muscle pain here. Uh, the only thing that's similar is, oh, chills and chills. See, they put them in different, or, different order. Chills and chills, okay. Confusion, confusion. 
but then they add delirium and hallucinations. And here's low blood pressure, and here's nosebleeds and fatigue. The paging doctor nosebleed. Nosebleed with congestion to head. Bleeding of nose. So really, there's only three things that these two lists have in common. Abdominal pain and abdominal tenderness. Chills, chills. And confusion, confusion. Everything else is different. <laughs> because they're omitting things from each list. But they, but they tell you that they're so, they're so similar. They thought them to be the same disease for so long as the symptoms. What do you mean? These are completely different lists. Because they're trying to make it look different. They're not showing you that it's identical. The few differences in symptoms can make diagnosis problematic. The few differences? What do you mean? It's almost all different. And take a look here. Okay. Treatment. Typhoid treatment involves fluids and electrolytes, as well as low-grade antibiotics. What about typhus? Typhus treatment requires specific antibiotics and may need intravenous fluids or oxygen. Notice they just rearranged what these... <laughs> they just rearranged the same treatments. Here it says, involves fluids and electrolytes. Here it says, may need intravenous fluids or oxygen. Okay. Fluids, fluids. Typhus requires specific antibiotics. This one requires low-grade antibiotics. What's the difference? See, they're trying to make it look different. It's not different. It's the same. Ergo, I put forth that typhoid fever is also typhus. And therefore, it is also deadly nightshade poisoning. Let's take it once more from the top. The wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. Rightcorn's protocol number 13. We have established our own men in all important positions. We must endeavor to provide the goyim with lawyers and doctors. The lawyers are all current with all interests. Doctors, once in the house, become confessors and directors of consciences. It is foretold that the snake has still to finish its work, strictly adhering to the design plan until the course which it has to run is closed by the return of its head to Zion, and until, by this means, the snake has completed its round of Europe and has encircled it, and until, by dint of enchaining Europe, it has encompassed the whole world. Woe unto him that builds a town with blood and establishes a city by iniquity. How is the faithful city become a harlot? It was full of judgment. Righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. Because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnants of the people shall spoil thee. Because of men's blood, and for the violence of the land, of the city, and of all that dwell therein. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stand, and the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. map of the course of the symbolic snake is shown as follows. The third in Madrid in the time of Charles V in AD 1552. The Siege of Metz 1552. The Siege of Metz during the Italian War of 1551 to 1559 lasted... Blah, blah, okay. The Holy Roman Emperor Charles V laid siege to the French garrison commanded by Francis, Duke of Guy. Although cannonades destroyed large parts of the fortifications, the Imperial Army was unable to take the city. Stricken by typhus, dysentery, and scurvy. Scurvy? Why scurvy? Like, no oranges? They're not eating their citrus over here? Charles's army was forced to abandon the siege along with the sick and wounded. Here's a map of Metz. Anyways, do your own research on this. You remember me saying I was only 80% sure about all this, right? And then I bumped it up to 88%. Well, guess what? I didn't find out this numerology until I was almost done with the last episode. I have no way of proving this to you, but it's true. 
This is just another one of those signs that uh, things are predestined, that things are written from the foundation of the earth. That's my conclusion. How many? How many are there? There were 80 people working there. Typhoid, all right. Not about that. One thing you may have noticed reading those comparisons of typhus and typhoid is that they don't tell you all the symptoms. Each page had a different list of symptoms, so I had to show you three to give you a bigger picture, but it's still scant. We're going to need a more detailed account of the symptoms to really prove that it's deadly nightshade. And that's what we have here. Typhus, the Phantom Disease by Otto Hum. Now, this is from Kodo, and Kodo is the Committee for Open Debate on the Holocaust. But don't panic, YouTube. We're not going to be denying your precious gas chamber stories. We're only talking about typhus here. In fact, we're going to be proving that a Holocaust did happen. People were sacrificed in those camps. It was a human sacrifice, and it was deadly nightshade that was the murder weapon.